Hi, my name is Rebecca Weininger, and I'm the director of the domestic violence law practice at the North Suburban Legal Aid Clinic. Today, I would like to talk to you about the legal rights that you have to protect yourself against an abusive partner. First, let's talk about the Illinois Domestic Violence Act. I promise this won't be a boring law lecture. It's just important to know that the IDVA protects all kinds of relationships, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, housemates, people who share a child in common, even acquaintances. If you are in danger or being harassed by someone you know, it is very possible that you could get an order of protection. I will talk about orders of protection and then we will talk about divorce and parentage cases. An order of protection prohibits someone who's threatening from coming physically close to the person that they're threatening and from contacting that victim through phone, texts, social media, and even through third parties. An order of protection can be entered for you and your children. An order of protection is enforceable by the police. So if the respondent, the person against whom the order of protection is entered, violates the order, the petitioner, the one who was granted the order of protection, can call the police and the respondent may be arrested. Violating an order of protection is a crime and that person can be prosecuted. If you are fearful that you are being harmed or will be harmed physically or emotionally by someone you know, you may be eligible for an emergency order of protection. To get an emergency order of protection, please call your local courthouse and ask for the court advocates who assist with orders of protection. You do not need a lawyer for this part. The court advocates are experts in helping victims fill out petitions for orders of protection and appear before the judge right away, in person or over Zoom, to get their order. For the emergency order, the person who is threatening you does not get notice, but is served with the emergency order after it's entered. From the moment you obtain an emergency order of protection, you are entitled to call the police if you see that person who is threatening you or if he contacts you in any way. In most cases, that first emergency order will last three weeks. On the last day of the third week, you will have another hearing. The respondent, the person against whom the order was entered, has the right to appear at that second hearing and contest the order. If he was served with the order but doesn't appear in court, the judge will grant and enter a two-year order of protection. If the respondent was served and appears in court, you will have the opportunity to present testimony and evidence to support your request for a two-year order. For this part, I highly recommend getting an attorney. My office, the North Suburban Legal Aid Clinic, does these hearings all the time, and they can be really tricky. A two-year order of protection is a potent way to protect against further violence and harassment, but it's only valuable if you enforce it. In other words, it does no good unless you are willing to call the police each and every time that the respondent violates that order. Orders of protection cases are heard in domestic violence division of each court. The domestic relations division or family court is another place to get protection from abusive partners. The family court hears divorce cases and parentage cases, which are cases between people who aren't married but have children in common. Both types of cases are governed by the Illinois Marriage and Dissolution of Marriage Act. And in both cases, you can ask the court to enter an order prohibiting your abuser from contacting you for any reason other than for logistics for pickups and drop-offs during visitation. It's important to know that Illinois is what's called a no-fault state. That means that you can get divorced simply because you want to get divorced. You do not have to have any reason why, and you do not have to prove that anything has happened. You file a petition for dissolution saying that you want a divorce, and that starts the process. Once the case is filed and served on the respondent, you may ask the court for temporary financial help from the respondent including child support, spousal support, and even an order requiring him to continue to pay for all the household expenses for which he paid when you guys were together. You do not need to wait until the end of the case to ask for this kind of support. Similarly, in parentage cases, you can ask the court for child support and contribution to the children's expenses while the case is pending. Each case is different, so I cannot tell you how long a case will take to get to the final order, but I can assure you that having a judge to go to for protection and to help enforce orders requiring financial support takes a huge burden off of you when you've been doing it alone or with an abusive partner for so long. If you have any questions about any of these remedies, even if you just wanna talk about whether what you've been through warrants emergency protection, please reach out to me at 847-737-4042.